Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Zhong Yizhu uh, from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. And uh, uh, my topic is uh, structural behavior of uh, concrete field octagonal shapes steel tube under unaxial compression. Uh, as we know, the concrete field steel tube is a very efficient construction member. Uh, and the commonly used uh, cross section shapes are uh, circular and uh, rectangular section. And for a circular section, because the uniform curvature, uh, the steel can provide the most efficient confinement from the steel to the concrete. For the rectangular section, however, uh, because the flat side and the sharp corner, uh, the confinement effectiveness is not that good, but the flat side uh, can provide more uh, beam column connection options for the engineers, such as we can use the end plate with blind bolted connection for the beam column connection. So we want to find this, uh, 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 we want to find a, a new uh, cross-section shape which have uh, both advantages, uh, which may have a, a good structural efficiency and uh, also the constructability. So we find this octonal section. And then uh, we will focus on the, what's the difference between uh, the octagonal section with the uh, uh, traditional cross-section shape. So we will conduct investigations on both three, uh, of all the three cross-section shapes. And, uh, and this study will focus on the hollow steel tubes and also the concrete field steel tubes. The uh, experiment investigations will focus on the uh, cross-section stability of the hollow stop columns and uh, also the confinement effect of the concrete field steel tube. And for the design, we will focus on the uh, cross-section classification of the hollow section and also the load capacity, uh, which consider the confinement of effects um, in the concrete field steel tube. And then let's start with the hollow steel tubular stop columns. Uh, Firstly, I will introduce how we fabricate this octonal shaped uh, hollow steel tube. Uh, first, we, we use the co-forming method, the press breaking method to form the half of the section and then uh, weld them together. The figure on the right shows some fabricated octonal hollow steel tubes. And we conducted the uh, tensile coupon test for the steel material and we extract the tensile coupon from the fabricated uh, steel tube, uh, and we consider the material property at the flat region, uh, corner region, and also the, the welding region. Uh, we found that uh, the, the yield stress at the corner region uh, is much higher than the flat region because the uh, co-forming process. And uh, for, the welding, uh, for the welding region, uh, uh, the material property at the, uh, in the longitudinal direction, we can see here the uh, actually the yield uh, stress is almost the same as the flat region, but the ductility is much lower. And uh, then we come to the stop column tests, and uh, the uh, the result of stop column test is summarized in this table, and uh, we find that with the similar cross section dimensions. Uh, the octonal and the circular section are, are all the uh, class one to three section, which have a uh, ultimate stress larger than the material yield stress. But for the square section, uh, it's, mar it's a marginally uh, class four section. And uh, the bottom photo shows the uh, uh, failure mode of all the three uh, sections. And we also conducted the finite element analysis uh, based on the upcurs, uh, and uh, and we chose these four node shear elements for the modeling, and we consider the material property as different regions, and for the imperfection inputs, uh, we measure the real imperfection uh, in in each of the tubes, and uh, and we uh, here we shows a, a typical imperfection profile for the octonal section we found here. Uh, at the welding side, there's a bow-shaped global imperfection at the welding surface. So we use different buckling modes to, uh, to replicate this kind of imperfection in the finite element analysis. 
And then this is the result of the finite element analysis. Uh, we collect uh, and some uh, existing uh, existing experiment data for the octonal hollow steel tubes, and so we find that the uh, the prediction of the ultimate uh, ultimate load capacity of the uh, octonal section from the finite element analysis is very good, and uh, and uh, we also find that the, uh, we find that the failure mode also can be captured by this finite element analysis. And then we come to the cross-section classification of the octonal section. Uh, as we know, the Eurocode already gives the cross-section slenderness limits for the class 1, 2, 3, and 4. For the circular section and the uh, rectangular section. So we try this uh, B of T ratio limits for the octonal section first. And uh, we can see here the validation in this figure. Uh, we find that some of the class four section of octonal section uh, is classified as class one to three if we use this B of T limit uh, from the Eurocode and the uh, American code. So we propose a new limit here. And then we think, uh, we find that actually the one of the typical buckling mode of circular section is very similar to the buckling mode of the octonal section. So we think why not we use uh, equivalent circle approach for this classification. So we chose this uh, equivalent circular section with same parameter uh, as the original octonal section. Then we do the validation again and uh, we found that the Eurico 3 limits could be safely used uh, to, for the classification of the octonal section. And then we come to the concrete fuel steel tube. And uh, we, uh, before the test, we conducted material tests on the concrete. We used three different concrete grades. And we measured the cylinder strength, cube strength, and, uh, and then the uh, stop column test, we test three, these three different cross uh, sections concrete field steel tube and uh, uh, the left uh, photo shows shows the uh, test setup and we use this reinforced ring at the, uh, at the column end to prevent the premature failure at the column end and the result is shown at the bottom figure and uh, we find that the low to shortening behavior of circular section and the octonal section are very close and they are both better than the square section. And then we look into the, the, uh, the failure inside the concrete field steel tube. We can see here the, for the high swing concrete, the, the damage is very serious, but for the normal, uh, for the normal concrete, it's uh, barely no damage to the concrete. And then we want to study the confinement effects so we, we need to know the uh, load capacity of each individual component. So we conducted the plain concrete column test, stop column test, uh, which is uh, exactly the same as the uh, concrete core in the concrete fuel steel tube. And then we plot this figure. Uh, we, uh, we can see here the concrete fuel steel tube, the uh, shorting, uh, load to shortening curve is much higher than the superposition of these two individual components. And, uh, and then we summarize the enhancement percentage due to the confinement. Uh, here we can see that the, actually the confinement percentage of the circular and the octonal section is very close and uh, both better than the square section. And uh, we also find if we increase the steel contribution ratio, the enhancement could be better. And then we come to the load, uh, the design of the load capacity of concrete fuel steel tube. Uh, for Euro code and uh, American code, there are two uh, different equations. One is for the uh, general section, which does not consider the confinement effect, and then the second one is for the uh, for the circular section, which considers the effect of the confinement. And firstly, uh, we will do the uh, assessment on on this uh, first equation, which does not consider the confinement. And we find that 
if we use this uh, equation, um, the, the code will underestimate the performance of the octonal concrete fuel steel tube. So we should consider this effect of the confinement in the design of the octonal concrete fuel steel tube. And then we, uh, again, we think we need to use the uh, equivalent circle uh, approach. And uh, here, uh, for, the, for the load capacity of concrete fuel steel tube, we can see that there is a reduction factor on the steel because the actual stress in steel and then it's the enhancement factor due to the confinement. And for the reduction factor, we found that if we use the inscribed circle of the original octonal uh, section, then we will find the same um, reduction factor as same as the uh, uh, original octonal section. So, and for the uh, confinement uh, effect, uh, uh, for the confinement effect, uh, we we find that the inscribed circle actually has the same steel contribution ratio as the original concrete fuel steel tube. And then, then uh, we summarize this uh, enhancement percentage compared between the octonal section and the uh, circular section with the same steel contribution ratio. This is from the, uh, this figure is, uh, this table is from the uh, experiment test. And then we find that actually the confinement effects uh, of the oct octonal section is like uh, about 70% of the uh, equivalent uh, inscribed circle uh, concrete fuel steel tube. Then together we, we apply these two equivalent factor to the design formula of, uh, of the Eurocode formula for the circular section. Then we propose this formula and we find that the prediction is much better. And here's the conclusion. Uh, we conducted the experiment investigations on the hollow steel tubes and the concrete fuel steel tubes with octonal section. And then we propose a, uh, a standard uh, slenderness limits for the octonal section and uh, also the equivalent circle approach. And then uh, in the study of the confinement, we find that actually the confinement effect of the circular section and the octonal section is, is almost the same and both better than the square section. And then we propose a, a design formula to, uh, to predict the, uh, the load capacity of the octonal concrete fuel steel tube. Thank you, that's all.